are. T-Town Sports has got you covered. The best of the best. T-Town Sports Daily is on now. This is really, really fun. The home of T-Town Sports Daily is WTPC AM Tuscaloosa. W265CG Tuscaloosa. Sports Radio. Tide 100.9 and 1230 AM WTPC. Learn to protect yourself at asc.alabama.gov. Paid for by the Investor Protection Trust and brought to you by the Alabama Broadcasters Association and this station. Alabama sports and beyond. T-Town Sports has got you covered. The best of the best. T-Town Sports Daily is on now. This is really, really fun. The home of T-Town Sports Daily is WTPC AM Tuscaloosa. W265CG Tuscaloosa. Sports Radio. Tide 100.9 and 1230 AM WTPC. Welcome in, T-Town, Tide 100.9 and 1230 WTBC. Your home for Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. Got a fun show for you today. Today is our Negative Tuesday segment where we break down how the Crimson Tide's opponent can take advantage of the Alabama Crimson Tide this week. And this week we are talking about the Vanderbilt Commodores. The pushover of the SEC may not be a pushover this season as Vanderbilt went into Columbia, Missouri and gave the Tigers absolute hell for 60 minutes and a little bit extra as that game did go into overtime. Vanderbilt had a chance to send it to double overtime in the last game they played. The reason we're talking about that game is because they had a bye week on September 28th. Vanderbilt had a chance to send it into overtime, could or to send it to double overtime, excuse me, couldn't get it done as the kicker did absolutely whiff on a field goal that went wide left and Missouri survived the upset attempt by the Vanderbilt Commodores. Vanderbilt is not a pushover this year. They've got a good quarterback. Clark Lee is a good head coach, or is a good coach, maybe not a good head coach, but he is a good coach still regardless. I really like what he's able to do from that side of things as well. He was the defensive coordinator for Notre Dame until the 2021 season when he did come in, come in take it, take over as the Vanderbilt football coach. So we'll talk a little bit about that today as Vanderbilt has got that vaunted running quarterback, Diego Pavia, I believe is how you pronounce his name. Pavia was the starting quarterback for New Mexico State in 2023. Why is that notable? Because he was the starting quarterback of the New Mexico State team. That defeated the Auburn Tigers last year in Jordan Hare. Now, granted, Alabama is not the same level of Auburn last year. However, it's still important to note that he is a running quarterback and he is a guy that could cause Alabama problems. As we have seen, mobile quarterbacks cause Bama problems not only over the past 17 years with head coach Nick Saban, but we also saw it in week two with Byron Brown. So if Diego Pavia is able to do a little bit of what Byron Brown was able to do against the University of Alabama, Alabama may be caught napping here, not necessarily in an upset as Alabama is the 22-point favorite right now, according to ESPN Bet. The over-under is set at 55 and a half, but... Vanderbilt still could be, Vanderbilt could still catch Alabama napping. And what I mean by that is Alabama's coming off this big win, this emotional win over the Georgia Bulldogs, a game where they said, you know what? We are the University of Alabama, but Alabama's had troubles in the past coming off these types of games. As you always will remember, Alabama LSU was always a very emotional game. It's considered a rivalry game by some around the country, maybe not necessarily here in Tuscaloosa because it's got to be a little bit more competitive if it is going to be a rivalry game than what it has been since Nick Saban took over the program. But it's viewed as a rivalry game. It's always a hard fought game. It's always very physical, very emotional, very just, there's so much that always goes into Alabama LSU every single year. 
And for the past couple of years, Alabama would go play Mississippi State that next weekend and always put up some form of a stinker, some sort of a struggle in the first half, getting over the emotional aspect of winning a big game against LSU. And then Mississippi State would come and punch Alabama in the mouth, and sometimes Alabama struggled to respond. There's a couple of times there where Mississippi State had a shot to defeat Alabama, most notably the 2018 season when Alabama defeated LSU on the road and then the next week went on the road to Mississippi State and Devontae Smith had to catch a game-winning touchdown from sophomore quarterback Jalen Hurts. And so we'll talk about that a little bit today. We'll talk a little bit about Alabama Vanderbilt as we turn the page from Georgia to Vanderbilt. We'll also take a peek at the Heisman odds because there's been a shift in the Heisman odds since Jalen Milrow's performance against the Georgia Bulldogs, and we'll explain a little bit the context why the Heisman odds have shifted a little bit here as well, as not only is Jalen Milrow's performance contributing to these changes in the Heisman odds, but some of the changes across the rest of college football as well. You think about it, Miami struggled mightily against Virginia Tech, almost probably should have lost that football game. The final touchdown of that play, this game was played on Friday night. The final play of that game was a touchdown thrown by Virginia Tech. They ruled it a touchdown on the field. And so theoretically, the way you overturn that call is you have indisputable evidence that the call was wrong on the field. I didn't think you had undisputable evidence that the call was wrong on that field. So I think Virginia Tech kind of got messed out of that touchdown to upset number seven Miami. Was it a touchdown in the first place? Probably not. I don't think it was a touchdown to start with, but they called it a touchdown. Yeah. And there was so much just jumbledness. Did you watch the game, Chase? I did. I was able to um, watch it. I was cooking and everything. It was just kind of going back and forth. And I saw the last play. I was like, oh, this is about to be something. And then when I saw a debacle, it reminded me of, I don't know if you remember, like a few years ago in Seattle. Don't had, do it. Yeah. Don't do it. You know what? I'm, I'm going to let it go. But yeah, it kind of reminded me of that a little bit. But it's just. I feel like Virginia, Virginia Tech got screwed a little bit. I feel like it should have been a touchdown. They called it a touchdown on the field, which means you have to have undisputable evidence that it is the wrong call. And I didn't think you had it. There was just too much of a jumbled mess going on in that end zone. Nobody, You could never really tell who had possession. You could never really tell what happened. And so I think at that point, the call should have stood and Virginia Tech should have got the upset over the Miami Hurricanes. Now, this isn't me being a Miami hater. My dad's a Miami fan. I'm a Miami fan when they're not playing the University of Alabama because of my dad. And yet, I thought Miami probably lucked out in that game. Miami probably got lucky on the last play of that game with them overturning that call. So we'll talk about that with Cam Ward, who was the Heisman front runner, no longer is the Heisman front runner, and some of these other big names across college football and where they now and where they now sit in the Heisman Trophy race. We've also got an update on Ryan Williams as he earned yet another award for his performance against the Georgia Bulldogs. The Sean Alexander Award hands out a weekly award to the best freshman performance of the week. That went to Ryan Williams this week. We'll talk about that a little bit here as well and why it's important that he got that award. Some of the other people who have gotten this award from the University of Alabama, some of the players from the University of Alabama who have won the Sean Alexander Freshman of the Year Award, not to mention the fact that current Alabama center Parker Brailsford was a finalist for the award last year as a redshirt freshman for the Washington Huskies. So that award's got a little bit of a – that award's got a little bit of – Allure around the University of Alabama, not just because it's Sean Alexander, but also because there's been several Alabama players who have been involved in the running for that award. So let's get things rocking and rolling here. If you guys want to call in and talk about anything today, you're more than welcome to. Do you want to talk about what Vanderbilt does good? Do you want to talk about the Heisman race? Do you want to talk about Ryan Williams? Or do you want to talk about the fact that Alabama and the NFL is showing out as Jameer Gibbs had two touchdowns last night and Jamison Williams has arrived in the NFL. Jamison Williams had a 70-yard touchdown last night for the Detroit Lions in their victory over the Seattle Seahawks, the 42-29 to victory for the Detroit Lions on the backs of the Alabama players on the Detroit Lions. Brian Branch was missing in that game due to an injury, so they needed hit, so they missed him desperately in run support. You could tell Detroit missed Brian Branch in run support and what he's able to bring to the table from his safety slash nickel position that he's kind of, he's kind of working as a hybrid player, safety slash nickel. They drop him back plenty of times. He's phenomenal in coverage, but he makes his money. He does what he does best from that nickel position, that fifth DB spot 
typically hanging around the slot, typically hanging around your slot receiver. That's where Brian Branch makes his money and makes his impact felt the most. You could tell Detroit was missing that last night. And then you could also tell that the Alabama coalition on the offensive side of the football was absolutely clutch and phenomenal for Detroit last night. So we'll talk about a little bit about that as well. Right here on this program, Tide 100.9 and 1230 WTBC. If you want to get in on the show, 205-342-9904 is the number for the program. Or you can download that free Tide 100.9 app and leave us an app message there as well. Chase will read that on the air and we will get things rocking and rolling. We'll respond to it right here on the air excited for a good show this weekend or excited for a good show this day today excited for vanderbilt this weekend i officially got my credential approved it took them a minute i had to email them and double check and make sure it was approved but vanderbilt credential good we'll be in nashville this saturday as we cover the vanderbilt commodores taking on the alabama crimson tide before we officially flip the page to vanderbilt though Let's talk about this Sean Alexander Award real quick. The freshman phenom Ryan Williams, the 17-year-old, earned another award for his game-winning performance against the Georgia Bulldogs. Williams hauled in six catches for 177 yards and one touchdown, which ended up being the eventual game winner over the Georgia Bulldogs. I posted that touchdown on my Twitter page. It's currently got 64,000 likes. 5.1 5.1 million views on my ex account. So if you guys want to go show some love to that video, I would greatly appreciate it. That's, um, so if you subscribe to the Twitter or to the X premium, I know that sounds a little weird. It sounds like I'm doing something bad with this page. It's not. It's, it's with well, the old Twitter blue when Elon first bought it. It was called Twitter blue. And so you can actually pay, you know, eight bucks for a subscription. And what it ends up happening is you're able to get paid for how many views and all the impressions that you have on social media. So I get, I probably get about 20 bucks a month. It's not much. It pays for the subscription itself and it's beer money. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm happy with. That's what I'm okay with right there. But you have to get like 5 million impressions over a three month window to be eligible for, it's called revenue sharing, to be eligible to get paid for what you post on Twitter. Well, I've hit 5 million off this one tweet. I've hit 5 million over the past two days. Based off this one tweet, a tweet that I put out about Kane Womack saying that Alabama needs to get better. And then I posted last night the Kirby Smart uh, locker room speech to his team following the 41 to 34 loss to the Alabama Crimson Tide. And so if you guys want to go check that out, help me out there a little bit. I would greatly appreciate it at Fulton W underscore on the X account. We will also get in the YouTube channel back up and running here as we took a little bit of a hiatus because I did get swamped with some schoolwork. But now that we're back on the train, go check out the youtube page it's just my name wyatt fulton go check that out we'll be putting some more content up on there as well back to ryan williams sean alexander tweeted congratulations to ryan williams the university of alabama ryan is this week's sean alexander freshman of excuse me freshman of the week ryan williams and the alabama crimson tide gained a victory over the georgia bulldogs in a lights out battle ryan had six catches for 177 yards including a game clinching 75 yard touchdown And then he shouted out some of the players that have won this award for the University of Alabama in the past. Now, granted, this is not the annual award. This is the weekly award. So freshman of the week award. Derrick Henry, got it. Devontae Smith, got it. Jalen Waddell, got it. Mark Ingram, got it. And a guy that we don't necessarily want to bring up a ton around here in Tuscaloosa, but he is still a superstar in the world of college football. He was elite for Alabama last season. He won the annual award last year. One, Mr. Caleb Downs. These are the players that Ryan Williams is launching himself into the stratosphere of being in the conversation with and impact players immediately getting to the University of Alabama. Derrick Henry, Heisman Trophy winner. Devontae Smith, Heisman Trophy winner. Jalen Waddle, first round draft pick. Mark Ingram, Heisman Trophy winner and first round draft pick. Devontae Smith was also drafted in the first round. Caleb Downs, who is only a sophomore, but he's still pretty daggum good at Ohio State. I think he's going to be a finalist for the Jim Thorpe Award, awarded to the nation's best defensive back in college football. I imagine he'll be a finalist for that award this season. Alabama's got a chance now with a guy like Ryan Williams to win the Sean Alexander Freshman of the Year Award once again. It would be if Williams wins it for his performance. He's currently leading Alabama in yards, touchdowns, and receptions from the receiving side of things. He's been better than I think anybody could have predicted, maybe except for Pat here in Tuscaloosa, because Pat keeps throwing out these outrageous numbers, and we're all saying, you know, I'm not entirely sure. (laughs) I don't know. Pat, you may be drinking the Kool-Aid a little bit, and every single week, there's Hollywood. 
doing exactly what Pat said. Does, does Pat know uh, Ryan Williams? Like, clo- are, are they family? Because he just he seems to know what he's gonna do, how many yards, how many touchdowns, and we're looking at him like. Maybe you need to kind of calm down a little I'll bit. I'll tell you what it is. Pat's probably a time traveler. He's come back from the year. You say something, Pat. Come on now. He's come back from the year 2028 20, after Ryan Williams just showed out as a rookie in the NFL. And he is just, he's feeding us little tidbits of information every single week. He's saying, hey, look, Ryan Williams, a buck 80 and a touchdown against Georgia. Well, Ryan Williams had a buck 77 and a touchdown against Georgia. I think Pat said yesterday, uh, that Ryan Williams was going for like 218 against Vanderbilt. So if that's the case, Pat, buy a lottery ticket, man, because you are on a roll right now. And so Ryan Williams could potentially win this award being such an impact player for the University of Alabama. He would become the third Alabama player to win the Sean Alexander Freshman of the Year award behind Caleb Downs, who won it last year. And one Mr. Will Anderson Jr. who won it in 2020. That's some pretty big competition. That's some pretty nice, uh, that's a pretty nice stratosphere to be in, especially as an impact level, especially with the impact level of a true freshman. Think about this. He's only 17 years old. He can't vote in November. He cannot vote for the next president of the United States because he will not turn 18 until February. If Alabama wins the national championship, which they are now a team in national championship conversations, I think if they can take what they did in that first half against Georgia and extrapolate it over a couple of 60-minute football games against teams like Tennessee, Oklahoma, LSU, Alabama's in the national championship conversation. Like, they're full-on in the college football playoff. And if Alabama wins the national championship on January 20th, MLK Day, also Inauguration Day, by the way, that's going to be one hell of a day, as you've got Inauguration Day, the College Football Playoff National Championship and MLK Day all happening on January 20th. If Alabama wins the national title that Monday, Ryan Williams will be the leading receiver for a national championship winning football team before he can vote, before he can own a car, before he can sign any NIL deals, legally at least, before he can do any of that stuff. Ryan Williams will be the leading receiver for a national championship team if Alabama wins the national championship on January 20th before he turns 18. Think about that. This may be the worst we are ever going to see him play in an Alabama jersey. I'm Barring health, assuming he stays healthy, knock on wood, we're saying he stays healthy. We're hoping he stays healthy. If he stays healthy, this is the worst we're going to see Hollywood perform in an Alabama uniform. So be excited about that, Alabama fans. This kid is something special. I said it. I covered him for three years down at Saraland High School. I covered his state championship win in Jordan-Hare Stadium, and then I covered his state championship loss here in Bryant-Denny Stadium where he went shot for shot with Jalen Mbakwe. Touchdown, 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 touchdown between Ryan Williams and Jalen Mbakwe in that state championship game. This kid is special. He's going to be something phenomenal, and I cannot wait to continue seeing what he's going to do as the starting wide receiver for the University of Alabama. When we come back on the other side of this break, we're going to talk about the Heisman odds. Jalen Milrow, your Heisman odds leader right now. We'll talk about some of the other top players in college football and where they fall on this list and why they sit where they sit. We'll talk about that and more on the other side of this break. Tide 100.9 and 1230 WTBC, your home for Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. Three sixty-five, twenty-four-seven. You'll find road and utility crews, tow truck, law enforcement, and first responders working along Alabama's roadway. We're making improvements and helping our communities stay connected. We're working hard to make sure you're safe on the road. Now we need your help to make sure we're safe too. Alabama's Move Over Law requires you to move over a lane when you see flashing lights on the roadside. And if you can't safely move over, please slow down. Visit DriveSafeAlabama.org. Brought to you by the Alabama Department of Transportation, Alabama Broadcasters Association, and this station. The the Alabama Securities Commission protects you from financial fraud. Anyone asking you for investment money must be licensed. You're careful with your money. Fraudsters aren't. Before you invest, call our hotline at 1-800-222-1253 to verify the licensing of the person making an offer and the product. Don't... 
Okay, bounce dryer sheets can't do it all. But for fresher, softer, better laundry... Are you receiving unemployment? Your benefits could be at risk. Here's how you can protect yourself and your benefits. Never respond to mail notifying you of a false claim in your name. Never answer a text message asking you to verify your account. And only respond to official Alabama Department of Labor's social media pages. Report fraud at labor.alabama.gov slash fraud. Brought to you by... This weekend, Fridays at the Free, every Friday during football season with Tide 100.9 and Ends Free Irish Pub, located at 1925 University Boulevard, downtown. Tide 100.9, Tuscaloosa weather. Partly sunny this afternoon, just a small chance of a shower through the evening hours. The high today, 83, tonight's low 64. Tomorrow, mostly sunny, the high 85, and we stay warm and dry Thursday, partially sunny with a high at 86. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. It's 77 degrees in Tuscaloosa. Never miss a moment of the action. Download the free Tide 100.9 app today. Welcome back to Tide 100.9. Before we shift to the Heisman conversation, I'm going to talk about this. A lot of people are up in arms about Ryan Williams' eye black that he had during the foot, during the game against Georgia where it said, kill everybody. Chase, see if you can find the clip from the movie The Program. It's not... People are calling him, you know, linking him to thug activity, gang activity in Mobile, as Mobile does have a pretty high crime rate. First off, Ryan Williams is not even from Mobile. He's from Sarah Land, which is 30 minutes north of Mobile. They just say Mobile because it's the biggest city in the area. It's like saying, oh, I'm I'm from Alabaster. Well, where the hell is Alabaster? You know what? Never mind. I'm just from Birmingham. Oh, okay. Well, I know where Birmingham is. No. Th- Sarah Land is 30 minutes north of Mobile. Ryan Williams was never linked to any activity down in Mobile. I've I've spoken with Jeff Kelly before. You know, I, I asked. Uh, you know, when people were starting to float this idea, you know, I asked him. I said, you know, it, and he said, absolutely not. He said Ryan Williams is one of the best kids we've ever had. He is always focused. He is focusing on nothing but what he needs to do to become a better football player, a better human being. I mean, hell, this kid graduated from high school early. This kid graduated from high school in three years. You think he's going to be able to do that if he's being if he's being in a gang doing some activity down there in Mobile? No, it's from a movie. It's a quote from a movie called I believe it's the program. Is that the it's it's a quote from the movie The Program where they're talking about the attitude you want to have on the football field. This is not you know the attitude you want to have in real life, but it's the attitude you have on the football field. It's that dog mentality that you want on the football field. And so this is the clip that everybody that Ryan Williams I Black was referencing from the program. You're out and you're ready. Yes, sir. All right, this is Mississippi State's offensive set. Second and two on our own twenty four. What defensive set might we call? Eagles dip a hero unless the setback shifts into the eye. Good. Third and seven. Okie Thunder Lion. What's your assignment? Kill the quarterback. Hit the tight end so hard his girlfriend dies. Kill everybody. There you go. That's what the clip is from. That's what the eye black is referencing. It's not gang activity. It's nothing from the crime rate in Mobile, which is actually pretty high right now. Uh, you know, we're hoping to get that change down there in the 251. But it's not anything bad. It's not anything negative. It's literally just a clip from a movie. So for those of you who are up in arms about this, don't be. All right. It's nothing serious. It's nothing major. He's not a thug. It's not gang activity. It's literally a clip from a movie. So all you people who are haters and trying to be, you know, trying to call him this, this, what he's not, he's not a thug. He's not a gangster. He's not a bad person. It's literally a clip from a movie. Get over yourself. I think it's funny because last week, he got media attention for, I think it was his sister. That Literally. Paying his nails. But now he has uh, tape, excuse me, over his nose that's saying kill everybody. Now everybody, oh, he's this thug. He's this, that. No, no. I want that same energy from last week. Like, why can't we just let them play? He's 17. Like, if you watch his interviews, how he conducts himself, do you really think he wants to revert to that part of that? He has so much riding for him. He, he can't do that. So for y'all, y'all, for people out there to call him a thug and he doesn't know what's going on, I think you need to take, take a look in the mirror 
and understand that we are in a different world. This is you can't. That is unacceptable. I mean, straight let's, up. Let's call it what it is, Chase. It's. I mean, be honest. Call it. Call it what it is. Please. It's racism. Yeah. Against yeah. a young African American who is doing things that every American across this country only can dream of being able to do. Mm-hmm. And they are finding any sort of way that they can knock this young man down. They can attack his character. I mean, literally. It, like, you, do you think the University of Alabama would send him to an NIL event where he can sign autographs, take pictures, hang out with fans if he was a thug? Come on now. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. So for those out there that are calling him a thug, call it what it is. It's being it's it's racist. Am I wrong in saying that, Chase? I I don't think it's I and I think it's kind of you you're more in tune with the, with that side of things than uh, I am. I think I, it's something that African American athletes deal with all the time. It's unfortunate we can't be ourselves. We can't express how we love the sport we do. But it, it's it's unfortunate. I think we take two steps forward, and then we take two steps back. We can't just enjoy the sport for what it is. Um, yeah, I'm not surprised. I have it's it's funny because I have these conversations with my dad all the time about like why it's, it's just different. We get viewed differently, mm-hmm. and why we're able to produce the yardage and the, and the points per game and everything. And everybody's cool with it, but when we step outside our zone, show who we are in a, in a positive light. Now we're looked at, oh, he's a thug. He's from the hood. You know, he's doing X, Y, and Z. And it's like, that's not even who who the person is. So it, it's just sad today. It's completely sad. It's, I mean, literally, this guy was getting national praise for, for supporting his sister and letting her paint his fingernails every, or paint his fingernails every week. Literally, and then less than seven days later, he's being called a thug, a gangster, a bad kid. No, he is not. He is the, he is one of the greatest kids I've ever talked to. He is very, very mature. I mean, what 17 year old that you think about any 17 year old that you knew, know, were at 17 years old? Could you stand in front of a room of 40 reporters after a 177 yard game? And be humble and answer articulate and handle the attention that you're getting right now. You have to be a good kid. You have to be a mature individual to be able to be in the space where Ryan Williams is right now. And now there are players who have, you know, fallen by the wayside on some things. We're not going to name any names because there there have been a couple of players here at the University of Alabama that have had a couple of issues with some stuff like that before. And you can kind of tell who those players are. I'm not going to say exactly how, but if you know, you know who the if you know how the Alabama, how the University of Alabama handles some of these things and handles its players, you can tell who the players are that may say something they're not supposed to, may be doing some activities they shouldn't be. Ryan Williams is not that kid. They had a rule literally in the fall camp. We were told you are not talking to a single freshman. I don't care. They can go for 400 yards a game. We're not talking to a freshman. Game one, Ryan Williams is standing at the podium. Game four, Ryan Williams is standing at the podium. We talked to Xavier Brown on Saturday night as well following his game ceiling interception. You've got to be incredibly mature. You've got to be incredibly smart, incredibly gifted, and a great kid for the University of Alabama to trot you out in front of the media. Because the media at the University of Alabama will chew you up and spit you out if you're not careful. So they have got an immense amount of trust in these kids, an immense amount of trust in these players to put them in front of us, in front of the media. They wouldn't do that if these kids were involved in the things that they're being, that they're, that people are claiming they're involved with. So for those of you who are saying these things about Ryan Williams and saying these things about some of these other kids, stop it. It's ridiculous. You have no evidence whatsoever. And quite frankly, it's being racist. So put an end to it because it's not happening. And I can almost guarantee that, especially for a kid like Ryan Williams. Moving off of that here a little bit, let's head to the phone lines here real quick before we jump into this Heisman conversation and before we jump into Alabama Vanderbilt. Let's talk on the phone lines here with Joe and Dothan. Joe, how you doing, my man? Doing well, Ryan. How are you guys today? Doing all right. What's on your mind this morning? I'm just getting in on the uh, conversation. Uh, Side note here, what I was going to ask you about was – you know, we've had, speaking of Ryan Williams, we've had him uh, 
you know, sometimes returning kickoffs and punts and stuff. How do you feel about that? I just, listen, I, I, I get it. Um, you know, I remember back in the day, David Palmer was, was very gifted at doing that, uh, returning punts and kicks. But, you know, if you'll recall in the 2020 season, Jalen Waddle was, was lost for the season on a kick return against Tennessee. And I, I think, you know, he came back and I want to say he was able to play a little bit in the national championship game. Um, you know, limited, but, but basically he was out the entire season after that game. So I just, I don't know. I just, I, I kind of like, I get it. You know, you want to put him out there. Anytime he touches it, it can be a touchdown, but it's like, he's so valuable as a receiver. I, I, I don't know. And the other thing I wanted to ask you was, have we gotten any updates on Kendrick Ball? Like what, what his injury was, what his status is? So to answer your first point, I don't love the idea of your starters playing on special teams. I understand why you do it because, you know, your starters are the ones that make the plays. There's a reason they are your starters. And so you want them a punt return touchdown, a kickoff return touchdown. It doesn't matter if you're up 28 nothing. A kick return touchdown or a punt return touchdown immediately flips momentum. That's a big play that can capitalize on momentum. So I understand why people talk about or why people will, or coaches will put their starters on special teams. But if you've got a kid like Ryan Williams, like a Jalen Waddle, I'm not sure I'd put him back there. Especially if, you know, like if Ryan Williams is, you know, 5% better than Cole Adams on a punt return, I'd probably put Cole Adams out there. That's not dogging Cole Adams. That's saying, hey, Ryan Williams is that valuable that God forbid he get twisted up you know, his ankle gets rolled up on, on a punt return that went for a five yard gain that moved, that moved you up five yards when Cole Adams may have been able to do the same exact thing and you're not dealing with an injury to your superstar wide receiver now. And, and I get, you know, Kool-Aid McKinstry was electric when he wasn't afraid to touch the football. Now he got, became afraid to touch, I say afraid. It's what it looked like. He ended up not really fielding many punts towards, uh, during the 2023 season. And so they actually ended up shifting and putting Caleb Downs back there for a little bit. But I think with how good Cole Adams and Jalen Mbakwe have looked on punt returns, I'd probably put them back there before I put Ryan Williams back there. Just because, like you said, you know, you lose a guy like Jalen Waddle, who I think Ryan Williams has the, he plays like Devontae Smith with the lateral mobility and the elusiveness of Jalen Waddle. It's like you took Jalen Waddle's skill set and put it in Devontae or Devontae Smith's body. That's what Ryan Williams looks like right now. You cannot afford to lose a guy like that. And then especially talking about, you know, like Kendrick Law got hurt. All right. I don't know what play he got hurt on, but Kendrick Law got hurt. So that's a kick returner that you're down now. One of your starting receivers is now down and can no longer play on kickoff duty. It's it's tough, you know. I, I again, I get why they do it. I mean, hell, you know, how many times did we see Reuben Foster just lay somebody out on a on a kick return or a punt return or something like that, and completely end whatever positive momentum a team had? But at the same time, what I think Reggie Raglan got hurt on a special teams play when he was here as a starter. You know, again, mm-hmm. Alabama lost Jalen Waddle on a special teams play, so it's it's iffy. I get why they do it. I pro- if I were a coach, I wouldn't do it. I'd probably put, you know, the second team out there, especially if you've got to like just like take Justin Jefferson for example, right? The linebacker here at the University of Alabama. They view him as a starting caliber linebacker, but you've got Jahad Campbell and Deontay Lawson. So how does Jeff- Justin Jefferson make his impact? I probably would put him on special teams. I'd make him one of your core special teamers and then involve him a lot in the regular game plan. Is what I would do. Now, granted, I'm not a coach. I don't get paid millions of dollars to make these decisions. But if I were a coach, that's probably how I would do it. And then Kendrick Law, we they actually did not ask Kalen DeBoer about injuries. I was honestly kind of shocked by that, considering you had Quay Russell, who's still banged up from the Wisconsin game, although he did play. You've got Kendrick Law, who went out in that game. Tim Keenan went out in that game as well. I don't know if a lot of people realize that. Tim Keenan went out in that football game against Georgia. I believe he may have returned, but it sounds like Oh, it sounds like everybody who was hurt against Georgia is trending in a positive direction to be able to potentially play against Vanderbilt. Now, again, it's Vanderbilt. You know, if Kendrick Law is 70%, you may say, you know what, we're going to hold you out against Vanderbilt. 
and lets you get closer to 100% against South Carolina, or if he's 50% and you say, you know what, yeah, we're definitely going to hold you out, may even hold you out against South Carolina, that way you're 100% when we go to Knoxville, Tennessee. But it sounds like everybody who was injured during that Georgia game is trending in a positive direction to be able to play. And we'll hear, and we'll get the injury report tomorrow night. Remember, the SEC uh, approved official injury reports for the season. They release every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday night around 7 p.m. Central Time. And then we get an official report 90 minutes before kickoff. So even though we won't talk with Kalen DeBoer again until after the Vanderbilt game, we'll get an injury report on Wednesday night. And I'm sure somebody will ask him on Hey Coach. But to answer your question officially, everybody who was injured is trending in a positive direction to play against Vanderbilt. Well, that's good news. And like you said, hey, don't sleep on Vanderbilt now. You know, that's a classic. I know it's Vanderbilt, but they do have a good quarterback. And uh, not only did they uh, take Missouri to overtime, but if you'll recall, they beat Virginia Tech in that opener. Virginia Tech, ball right, should have beat Miami. Um, so, and I know Virginia Tech's not a great team, but I'm just saying, um, Vanderbilt's you know what's a, crazy? Vanderbilt's a weird school this year. Sorry to cut you off. They're they're odd this year. They beat Virginia Tech week one, smoked Alcorn State, whatever. And then they go and lose to Georgia State on the road. And then almost beat Missouri. So they're an odd team I, I was, this year, but it, it, it's a trap game. Yeah, I was just going to point out, you know, Virginia Tech, they faked that field goal when they were up three against Miami in the second half, late in the second half, and didn't get it. If they'd have just kicked the field goal there, they're lining up to kick a game-winning field goal instead of throwing a Hail Mary at the end. It's just just worth noting there. That is true. I appreciate it, Why? Great show. Thank you, Joe. Thank you so much for calling in. When we come back, Jeff, I see you. Troy in Salt Lake City getting a little bit national with our callers here. We'll get to you guys right here on the other side of this break. Tide 100.9 and 1230 WTBC. You're home for Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. Go inside the Alabama Crimson Tide with the Gary Harris Show. Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. on the Gary Harris Show, the NASCAR Report with Mac Holder. We always look forward to that. And also, Drudy Arman will join us. He uh, couldn't make it on Tuesday, so we've got the Rocket Man with us and Larry the Music Man as well. Plus your phone calls and more. That's a big Wednesday edition of the Gary Harris Show at 9 a.m. And plus, don't miss our grand opening celebration Friday, October the 11th through Sunday, October 13th. And check us out at academy.com with free shipping on purchases over $25. <laughs> Stay up to date with the Crimson Tide. Local high school sports and Bama in the pros right here. On Tide 100.9. Back. Welcome back to Tide 100.9 and 1230 WTBC. Your home for Alabama Crimson Tide sports. Got to move quick here as we got two app messages and three phone calls. Let's hit those app messages here real quick, Chase. Yeah, we got two. One from Kim and Monroeville, and then the other one, SL Bama Girl in Salt Lake. So the first one from Kim, she, she says, he is a great kid. My granddaughter loves him. Absolutely. He's a great, he's a great young man, a great human being, and a daggum good football player. So great, great to hear for Ryan Williams there. What's the other one, Chase? Sure. Uh, she said, all these folks criticizing Ryan Williams would desperately want him on their team if they had a chance and would beg their NIL to pay him whatever it took to get him. Love that he has a close relationship and supports his younger sister. Absolutely. Every other team, all 133 teams in FBS would beg Ryan Williams to sign with their football team. You guys realize Georgia recruited him as well. Kirby Smart said it in the post game. He went on a couple of visits to Georgia during his recruiting trail, he had a visit scheduled to Texas before he committed, recommitted to the University of Alabama, canceled that Texas visit, visited Texas A&M. So, I mean, he, he's visited a lot of high-profile programs in the world of college football. And I think had he ended up on the campus of the University of Texas, it would have been a very hard decision he would have had to make between Alabama and Texas with Caitlin DeBoer and Steve Sarkeesian. Let's head to the phone lines here real quick. Let's We got three phone calls here, so we got to move a little quickly. Let's go ahead and start with our good buddy Jeff in Tennessee. Jeff, how you doing, man? All right, I, I just wanted to say uh, I, I was uh, I read read some stuff more well, just different stuff online to pull, that pulled up on my computer, some stuff that found all different have to say about about you tell you football and the, the, and that's that's the one thing I don't like is stuff like Ole Miss has no business losing to Kentucky and uh, the, you know all that kind of disrespect and that's that's why that's what gets my goat about people like. You know him and you and the rest of these Alabama and all the fans. 
this this conference because we are the most hated, disrespected school in the SEC, and everyone knows it. Mark Stoops is disrespected, hated, not liked because he wins. Because he wins, wins. Okay, I know you know a guy named I do probably don't know him Blake Tom. I know who that is. I do know Blake. Okay, we, when 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 they played Georgia a couple weeks ago. He, he, well, a few weeks ago, he wrote that, it, that the Georgia game was a Mark Stoops special. See, keep people close and not win. Okay, today, there's a, oh, there's a, both of our papers down here are owned, the papers are owned by the same company. So they run the same stuff. So he writes today that, that, that Florida could use Lane Kiffin because of his offense and all this. So he starts writing, da 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 talking about the old Miss game, he can take game, da-da. So he's got a little, a little blurb, a little paragraph in it, talks about how about Mark Stoops going to Florida. But then he says that Mark Stoops is a defensive coach, and that Florida, all they want is a bunch of touchdowns, a bunch of offense, and that he couldn't coach in Florida, and all this, he's making all this money at Kentucky, and he has a cushy job, basically, because there's no expectations at Kentucky, which is a bunch of bull crap. A bunch of bull, you know what, in my opinion, okay? I don't, I don't know if you don't think we have a good football program. I'm aware of it. We've got no talent, okay? And now he went for it on fourth and seven at the 20. And I told you why, because he, he thought he could get a one-on-one with Barry and Brown, and he got it, and, and he nailed it. That's why he went for it, okay? He, that's why he didn't punt, okay? And like I said, but I mean, it, 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 he says he says that he, he, go, he said they could do a lot worse than Stoops. And they said they've already done it with Napier being worse than Stoops. And he said he could take you basically has, has no, no championship aspirations at all. He's got basically the cushiest job in the Southeastern Conference, Coach in Kentucky. And I'm sure you agree, correct? I think agree he's, I think he's got a good job at Kentucky. Not a lot of people expect Kentucky to be good. And yet when Mark Stoops is doubted the most, it's when he pulls off a top 10 upset like he did against Ole Miss. But, 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 but so, so, so you agree, no expectations. None in Kentucky, where he's had to go zero and twelve and not win a ball game. Is that what you like you believe? No, I don't, no. I think I think Kentucky is a perennial bowl team, a good team most of the time. Occasionally they have a couple of down years, but with Mark Stoops, Mark Stoops is a safe coach, and what I mean by that is that he is not going to have a ton of down years, and if he does have a down year, he's going to rebound pretty quick, almost immediately, and bring Kentucky back to that seven win kind of benchmark that a lot of people are expecting them to have, and then occasionally he pulls off a big time upset should have upset Georgia and then did upset Ole Miss and if, and if Kentucky but, does upset Georgia this is a very different conversation we're having about Kentucky this season but 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 like you say like you like like Pat Marcus, we have no championship aspirations is that your thing too that we're, we're never going to win anything that we're never win anything in life so if, 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 if that's the case then we should shut down the program tomorrow no if, i don't if, think if, that if, i mean kentucky's a really good kentucky's a really solid program they're not a bottom feeder in the sec they're not alabama or georgia they're in that second tier i've always had kentucky in no, that second tier of no, SEC we'll never teams. Get up to that tier. i know we're never going to get to alabama as far as 15 championships but what so, so you tell me that, that like this guy in Huntsville, that I'm sure you know double D, that we'll never win the he says we'll never, never, never win the Southeastern Conference. I'll, I'll, I, I will not say never. I you know, things can always change in college football. You know, at next look, Kentucky could open the bag and go get the number one quarterback in col in, in the recruiting class, and then all of a sudden Kentucky's a championship contender. They haven't, well, but they've got the ability well, to Well they, they had one they had one years ago in Tim Couch that's in the college of Hall of Fame now. They did have him, so that that's years ago. But what I'm saying is, is I'm saying he, he says he's making he makes like nine million, which is, he thinks is way too much money for for what he what they're getting and all this stuff. And they'll they'll never win a championship of any kind. And he said he said and he said that he would he would crawl on every out of every marsh to, to get to get to the University of Florida if he was offered the job. I he think that go down, he would go down there right now. And the reason I, why I told dumb. you, I told I told you the reason why he wasn't hired at A and M. Because they took one look at his SEC record and told him to get out of here. That's what they told him. They took one look at that and said, you're, you're not, we don't have no one for no part of you. And see, let me tell you something. I'll take you to Kentucky. I know you people in Alabama don't like and that's okay. Because you're still celebrating some one victory that you think you want a championship off of Saturday night. That Paul Feinbaum says is a, it's been in 40 years. Paul Feinbaum's problem is he's turned the SEC too long. That's his problem. Okay. That, that's his problem in life. If he thinks that's the greatest thing he's ever seen, he, 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 he's, he's sad and mistaken. I can tell you about now. He's sad, sad and mistaken, sadly, very sad and mistaken. Okay, because, like I say, but I mean, I know.
know you don't like us, and that's okay. Because we're like I told somebody, like I told somebody the other day, we're going to keep chopping wood and keep doing it until one day we're going to get there. One day, and I'm hoping it's when I'm alive. Because if I am, if and you're alive too, I'm going to ring you and every word I have of you that says we can't do it. I never said I'm Kentucky hoping, couldn't do it. I, know, I never I'm said saying, I didn't like. I know, Kentucky. but I'm saying people like you and, and other people like you that say we can't. I'm not saying you're not saying it. I'm saying people like you would say we can't do it. That's what I'm saying. That we can't win anything, a champ, any kind. And basketball is totally different. It's totally different. Basketball is totally different because we got your tradition. But football, it's not. But one day we're going to get there. One day. Okay, and like I said, he's the longest tenured coach in the SEC for a reason. He was given time. That's why. It's not like Auburn and two. We've got to get rid of somebody. That's what Auburn and that's Alabama's like that too. So we're not like we're not like them. We're, we're a Commonwealth in Kentucky. We're not a state. And so go look at that definition of Commonwealth and see what it says. And and and, and I'll talk to you sometime. All right, Jeff. Thank you so much for calling in. I. Don't lump me into this group that says Kentucky's never going to be able to do anything. I will never say never with that type of stuff. I mean, Kentucky's a good football program. They've got consistency, and that's what a lot of people are hunting for in college football. They understand that they're not going to be a national championship contender every year, but they build their program to – they aim for a year. They build their program to that year, and then during that year that Kentucky is expecting to be a good program, they're a 9-10 win program that year. And at this point, a 9-10 or 10 win year – Put you in a college football playoff discussion. And I think that's a really good spot for Kentucky. They've got some good consistency there with Mark Stoops. Let's stick with the phone lines here. Let's talk with Troy in Salt Lake City. Troy, how you doing? Good, thank you. And I'll be quick for you guys. My wife kind of stole my thunder. She's Salt Lake SLC Bama girl that texted in our frustrations about folks criticizing Ryan Williams. And we were just talking this morning about how all of them would love him on their team and would wish their NIL would pay dearly to get him and then he'd be the greatest kid in the world because he actually might be really quickly. I'll just add to what she said. You know, you look at his social media, the new wave podcast, his relationship with his family, how he had his siblings with him on the recruiting trip, uh, what his coaches and his, and his fellow teammates think about him. No question. He's a top notch young man. So it's frustrating to see people take something out of context and take shots at him just because quite frankly, he beats them and he's going to beat them on the field. Um, one other quick observation I'll make, then I'll, I'll let you guys move on. Um, I think Georgia is kind of lucky they got Bama early in the season in game four because if they do get the chance to play them again in December or January, Alabama is going to be better than they are in game four in Kalen DeBoer's first year here with new staff putting in new schemes. Georgia's a further along developed program. They are what they are. Kirby's been there a while. I mean, think if Kirby was gone from Georgia and they're playing Alabama in game four. I think that Georgia needs to be the ones concerned if we get them in December or January because our team will have had a full year under DeBoer, his staff, SEC experience season, younger players developing, knowing the schemes better. So that's another kind of frustrating thing, listening to dog fans bray that, that they want Babin again. I, I hope they get what they're asking for. I really do. Roll tight. Right back at you, Troy. Thank you so much for calling in, and thank you for listening. I completely agree. If this Alabama team is going to only continue to get better, if they can, again, if they can put together a full 60 minutes of what they looked like in that first half against Georgia, this might be the best team in the country. They're already rated number one, but if they can put together in a, in a full football game what that first half looked like against Georgia, I think they're in a really good spot. And you saw it in the first half. Kirby Smart and Glenn Schumann were just dumbfounded. They had no idea how to stop the University of Alabama. So, I, for Georgia fans' sake and for the mental health of them, I kind of do hope they get Alabama again because it would be extremely funny watching them go 0-2 against Alabama in one season. Let's stick with the phone lines here as we get ready to wrap up the show. Let's talk with J-Rob. J-Rob, how you doing, man? Good afternoon, Roll Tide, Wyatt. How you doing today, man? Fantastic. I can't complain. Won't do me any good if I do anyways. What's on your mind this morning? Well, you know, <clears throat> I was there Saturday, and that was a great atmosphere at Tuscaloosa and Bryan Denny Stadium Saturday night. It's uh, one of the best I've been in. I've been going to football games for a long time, so it's in top one or one or two that I've been to uh, in my lifetime. But it was great. Uh, glad that the crowd was into it and stayed with it for for most of the game and. Uh, I just hate that uh, we kind of had a let down in the second half. I think we lost our intensity. Georgia did. Uh, you got to give them credit. They they found some 
found some matchups and stuff that they took advantage of in the second half. We let our guard down a little bit and uh, that, that lost our intensity. And but we pulled it out. Glad we did that. I'm proud of the team for uh, coming back after they come all after they come all the way back and uh, took the lead. We didn't let it bother us. We uh, took the lead back and won the game at home. And uh, it was a great night and great great victory for the President Tide. But uh. I also called to uh, tell you I'm sorry that I'm sorry about your Packers Sunday, man. They they lost a heartbreaker. They were they got down too far to come back, like kind of like Georgia did. They did, and and to be fully transparent, I I worked until about four in the morning on Sunday, so I slept until about two in the afternoon. Didn't even really watch that game for uh, Green Bay, but you know. We'll see. We'll see how they do. It was one game. Yeah, it was a division game, so it hurts a little bit more. But I think Green Bay will be fine. Jordan loves getting back in his rhythm. It was his first game back after what many people thought was going to be a season-ending injury against Philadelphia in week one down there in Brazil. So I'm just happy Jordan loves playing again. He'll get back to his – he'll get back to the level that I think he can play at, and we'll see what Green Bay does. You just got to make the big dance. You don't have to necessarily be the big dog, but you got to make the big dance. It was twenty eight nothing before they scored. That and was, it was sad. I mean that. I mean that's that's kind of like the Georgia game uh, uh, Saturday night. But they come my way back and hey, they lost by two, right? Or three? I think so. Yeah, it was a three point game. I think so. Uh, similar to yeah. Georgia, down twenty eight nothing, storm back, couldn't quite get it done. They don't usually lose at home, though. You know that. They don't lose in Green Bay. No. Lambeau Field is one of those environments that you don't lose a ton of games if you're the home team. Same as Brian Denny. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. We don't lose it very often. But uh, uh, I had a great weekend. I got to meet Chase over at uh, 10, was it 10 to 25? Is that what they call it? Awesome. Yeah. Park. Yeah, I got, got to meet him. And for, you know, we talk just about every day. I mean, because uh, I call Martin's show in the morning first thing. It was pretty Pretty much every day, but uh, yeah, you and Chase are doing a good job. Just want to let you guys know that. And uh, Jeff, man, you, you gotta you gotta lighten up, man. Stop <laughs> having, don't stop stop being an angry old man, man. Be happy. Be happy your team won. Be happy that they're doing good, man. Don't don't be mad about it. He's be got sure, be proud of that. He's got a great be look. He's got it. a great season going so far. Should have beat Georgia. They're three and two right now. Their next game is Vanderbilt and then at Florida. So they're probably going to be five and two, and then they get yeah, Auburn, then they get Auburn at home. So that's a probable way. You're six and two. That's ball eligible right there. And so yeah, be you've happy, got a good happy, you've got a good slate, man. Be happy about Kentucky. Exactly, because your football team is going to be better than your crappy ass basketball <laughs> team this year. We're going to take care of business this year, Jeff. I'm sorry, we are going to be SEC champions. Roll Tide. Right back at you, J-Rod. Thank you so much for calling in, man. Chase, do we have any more app messages before we get out of here? Uh, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> it just kind of came in. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> one from Daryl in Orlando he said, Jeff is like one long run over angry paragraph. <laughs> From a journalist, I hear that. Uh, we got one from JC and Billings. He said, delusional K- Kentucky fan, another fan like Digger that has to call 109 because the states don't talk to colleges. That's what I was wondering. Like, how many of these states have a full on college foot or college, not college football, college just I don't think radio so. show? I, don't, I know Mississippi State has one, but I don't think a lot of schools have that. Well, look, we appreciate you guys calling in. Anything else, Chase? Uh, yeah. He said, Joe from Dothan. Shout out, Joe. He says, please forgive Jeff. He confuses Wyatt's voice with the voices in his head. LOL. <laughs> look, we appreciate everybody who leaves us an app message calls in, even if it's angry Kentucky fans like Jeff or angry Texas fans like Digger. We always love to talk with you guys right here on Tide 100.9 and 1230 AM WTBC. Tomorrow, we'll take a look at the Heisman odds and the rest of college football as we've got some big games coming around, coming down the pipeline this weekend in college football. Not just Alabama and Vanderbilt, but some rest of the, but the rest of college football is going to have a great weekend. Thank you guys so much for listening. Up next.